Patients sometimes ask me about spine fusion surgery, so I thought I would try to explain it a little bit. Spine surgery often comes down to the word fusion, whether you get the bones of the spine fused together or not. And if you don't get it fused, will getting a lesser surgery increase the likelihood of you getting a fusion in the future? The reason you get a spine fusion surgery is because the surgeon suspects there is some sort of instability in the spine regarding one bone in relation to another, or it's suspected that your symptoms are coming from more than one area. The fusion surgery where the bones are locked together uses either metal hardware, bone, or both. Now spinal fusion surgery has been a lifesaver for many people. Patients with spinal deformities or trauma, patients with severe instability or scoliosis or spinal fracture or loss of bowel or bladder function. But as good as the spine surgeons in Charleston are, this is generally a surgery you want to avoid if at all possible. And it has to do with something called adjacent segment disease. Let's take a look. This is an L405 fusion, a surgery done through an incision in your back that cuts important support muscles to your spine. Here's the last rib. So this is L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. These spaces here are where your discs are. And these holes off of the side are where your spinal nerves exit the spine. Now, you do hundreds of activities a day that require your spine to move, such as sitting, standing, walking, reaching, bending forward, bending backward, lifting, or twisting. And in order to have your spine maintain the same range of motion after surgery as you did before surgery, that motion has to come from somewhere because it's not going to come from right here. So these levels right above the fusion and below the fusion are going to have to work harder to give you the same range of motion. So for lumbar surgery, there are really two things that are going against you. Number one, the surgery has to cut muscles in your back which are needed for support of your spine and you get this adjacent segment disease above and below the fusion. Now let's look at your neck. This is a fusion of your neck. It is a fusion of two levels and this surgery is done from the front of your neck and so it avoids cutting these muscles back in the back of your neck which is good but you still have the adjacent segment disease above and below the fusion in order for your neck to maintain the same range of motion. A medical study in 2016 revealed that within six years of having spinal fusion surgery, 25% of patients require another surgery. And within 15 years of fusion surgery, 40% of patients require another surgery. This can be due to persistent pain, failure of the bones to fuse, or the adjacent segment disease we just discussed. What I did not cover today is that surgery can cause scar tissue. And this scar tissue can damage the delicate core muscles that are needed to support your spine it can trap surrounding nerves, leading to worsening sciatica. And it can also make a surgeon's job more difficult for future surgery because it's harder to navigate those areas of your back that have already had surgery. If you would like to learn more about what may be causing your pain and help sorting out your treatment options, give us a call. We'll treat your pain as if it were ours.